بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له من يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعض فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار as it's been announced and spread on the group, announced as well on GLM social media groups, I believe. Today's 40 Hadith class is going to be suspended. And today is going to be the last class that will be given here until after the Hajj, inshallah. So next week, be idhmillahi, there won't be any class. We're going to make today's reminder as well, a reminder about the importance of Hajj for the people who are going from our community and from other communities who may tune in to hear today's dhikr, dhikra, nasiha. And for those who are not going, want to take this opportunity to make tasjir and to really encourage you and to get serious, that you should get serious about performing hajj. It is an ibadah from the ibadat that are not, is nothing like it. Anyway, as it relates to the issue about the hajj, performing the hajj is the journey of a person's lifetime. Journey of a lifetime. It's not like any other journey. And we've been commanded in a number of ayat in the Quran, and we've been encouraged by the Prophet from his authentic Sunnah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to travel. And in traveling, there's a lot of benefit. It is an integral, essential aspect of the lives of Bani Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the Quran, Qul siru fil arud, fandur kayfa bada al khalq. Tell them, Ya Muhammad, tell your companions and tell your followers by default. Go ahead and travel through the earth. Travel. It is a fi'lul amr. Allah is commanding people, encouraging people to travel. He said, and look at how Allah began his creation. So one of the methods, one of the wasail that a person can come to know about Allah's haq of worship is by traveling in the earth. So if a person travels through the earth, he's going to see the different terrain, he's going to see the different things that are happening as it relates to Allah's creation, and all of it points to the fact that there is an ilah, that deserves to be worshipped right here in this country. It was hot today. It is now cool after the rain. It's cold still up in the north in Leeds. It is not hot up in the north. 
It's okay. But you come to the West Midlands, it gets hotter. The same country, go further south, London, it gets a bit hotter. What other people come from where we come from? Those in the audience from Eritrea, those in the audience from Ethiopia, from Sudan, from Somalia, from West Africa. You travel through the earth, you see over here it's real cold, there's snow, those are white people. Look at Allah's creation. As Shahidu Min al Kalam, Allah commanded us to travel through the earth. And a number of ayah, Qul, Siru fil Arab, Thumman Duru, Kayfa Kana Aki Watul Mukadibin. Tell them, Muhammad, your companions, Radi Allah Anhum wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and by default, tell your community. And another ayah, travel through the earth. Travel through the earth and see what Allah has done to those people who rejected Al Islam. See what Allah has done to the people of Ad and Thamud, to Pharaoh's people, to the Greeks, to the Romans. Look all over the earth and see what was the end result. So, everything as it relates to traveling, because it is an essential part of a person's life an integral part of everybody's life, then you can rest assured that El Islam came and told us everything we need to know about traveling, while we traveling, the wisdom, how to do it, and so forth and so on. We haven't left anything out of this book. So when you travel, your dua is accepted. When you travel, you can shorten your prayer. When you, everything we need to know. It is an ibadah from the ibadat of al-Islam to travel according to the sunnah. The point of all of what I just mentioned is a number of ayat encourage us, command us, travel. Because you have to travel. It's a part of being a human being. So right here in our masjid, people are going to travel because of business. They're going to go to sell something or they're going to purchase something in the earth. So people are going to travel in order to get educated. People right here in our audience, they came from Pakistan, they came from different parts of the Muslim world in order to get their PhD, their master's degree, their bachelor's degree here from this country. So people travel for education. It is lazim, you have to travel. People travel for health reasons. So us right here, some people come from the Muslim world to Europe, to America. Because the imkaniyat in our country is, our country is da'ifa. So people come here. Or they can't come to the West. So they go to India. They go to our, uh, Turkey. For health reasons. There are many reasons. Many. And some people travel for a siyaha. They travel for tourism. They go to Dubai. Concerning tourism, there was a man who came and said, Ya Rasulullah. It then leave his siyaha. Give me permission to travel on the earth so I could just make tourism. I just want to cool out tourism. The Prophet told the man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna siyaha ta ummati al jihad fi sabirillah. He said, The tourism of my ummah is that you travel to make jihad fi sabirillah. Does that mean it's haram to go to Dubai and to jump out of airplanes? And to go to the Burj Khalifa and jump off of there with a kite? Does it mean you can't go into the water with the ski boats and go around? You can do that if you want to do that. If you want to do that, that hadith doesn't make it haram. That hadith is telling the men of this ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real, the real traveling, the real tourism is al jihad. When you travel to spread this religion, a dawah Allah or other than that. So the point here is many reasons why we travel. So someone wants to go to Dubai, and I've been to Dubai. Dubai is the dunya, and the Prophet spoke the truth, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the hadith of Jibril, when Jibril asked him, tell me about Yom al-Qiyamah. He said, the one who's asking the question knows just as much as the one who's being asked. He said, give me some of the signs. He started telling them some of the signs. And one of the signs, he says, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa antara. Al-Hufat, Al-Urat, Al-Ala, Ra'ashat, Yatatawaluna fil Buyan. One of the signs of Yom Al-Qiyamah, 
is that you're going to find the Arabs who are insignificant compared to Persia and Rome and Greek. You'll find the barefooted Arabs. They don't have good shoes from where they come from, their civilization. You'll find the barefooted Arabs, the naked ones, the way they dress, where they come from, back there in the desert. They didn't have expensive robes that came from Persia and places like that. The barefooted, naked, poor Arabs who are shepherds of sheep. You will find them competing in the erection of lofty structures. That's Dubai. That's Mecca by the law of the Kaaba. Wallahi. I'm not here to talk about that's haram. I'm here to say to you, if you travel to Dubai, Dubai is a nice place to visit. It's a nice place to visit, wallahi, but it's not the journey or a journey of a lifetime. Some of you are here and your wives are back in the countries where they live. You go back to meet your wife after not seeing your family for a year, two years, three years, four years. That's not the journey of a lifetime. That's an important journey. But the journey of a lifetime is for a person to be put in position to go and make hajj or to go and make umrah. So we're here to remind you of the haq of Allah Azzawajal, upon us as it relates to hajj and umrah. And it's not okay for a person to continue year after year after year. La yuhaddith nafsuhu that you have to make hajj. It's not okay. You got to say, I'm going to make hajj this year. You got to start making dua. You got to start saving your money. You have to start hustling. You have to do whatever you can do, the grind, in order to build up the money. You got to borrow money. Do what you can do. Don't just keep procrastinating. So why is the hajj the journey of a lifetime? And as I look into the audience, there are students here of mine who they go to Umrah, alhamdulillah. I would say how many of you are going to hajj this year I know some people don't want to be known, so I'm not going to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But in our audience, we have some students, mashallah. Every time they get an opportunity, they're going over to make umrah. Because that's the, that's the Muslim. That's the Muslim. The journey of a lifetime. It's a journey of a lifetime because as a Muslim, there is a religious obligation that we have to go to hajj or to go to umrah. Wajib is from the Ojib and Wajibat. More wajib than traveling to see your relatives and stuff like that. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, Wallahi ala nasi hijjul bait, man istata ilayhi sabila. Allah has the right over mankind that they come to my house, whoever has the ability. That's everybody here. Now, there are some people who live 200, 300 kilometers from Mecca. Some people live 500 kilometers from Mecca, 500. We live thousands of kilometers, and it's still wajib upon all of us. It's wajib upon all of us. And it's not okay for anybody to sit here and to say, I don't have a job. I'm broke. I don't have any money. I can't go. Because that's not the way the Muslims should look at it. Allah is al-ghani. And Allah Ta'ala commanded Ibrahim Ya Ibrahim, proclaim the Hajj to the people. Just like this Mu'adhan today did the Adhan, Adhan fin Nasi bil Hajj. He did the Adhan. That Adhan, when it goes out of the windows and the door, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every human being. Every jinn, every animal, every insect, every bird, every tree, every rock, everything that heard the Mu'adhan's adhan is going to come Yom Al-Qiyam and bear witness that he gave dawah to a tawheed in Islam. Everything that he said. Nobody here knows about the ants under this carpet. Nobody knows about the ants behind this drywall. No one knows. The mice and all of this stuff going to come your Mukiyama and bear witness. And the Muslim has no problem believing in that. Same thing. Thousands of years ago, Allah told Ibrahim, proclaim the Hajj to the people. They're going to come to you, Ibrahim, to perform Hajj. 
walk in. And they're going to come on camels that are lean. They're going to come to you from every highway and byway, from every nook and cranny, from every direction. So I know, historically, there are people from Africa, from Mali, from Chad, from those parts of Africa in the back in the day. When they used to go to Hajj, they used to say to their families, my salama, because they didn't know if they were coming back. Highway robbers, um, those, uh, what are those animals out there, man? They'll eat your hyenas. Hyenas eat people. But with all that poverty, they still went to Hajj, walking and other than that. And now we come 2023, and people don't make it their business to perform the Hajj way back then, thousands of years ago. People will come walking. Nobody making no hajj walking right now. We're taking airplanes. And someone who wants that money, who wants to get that money, if there's a will, there's a way. And plus, Allah will open up the way for you. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a journey of a lifetime, and that is wajib. Everybody has to do it. You're sitting there, you better talk to yourself and remind yourself about making hajj. Now the issue is you're a student. You didn't think you were going to make Hajj. It wasn't on your mind. I didn't step that. But did you ever say to yourself since last Hajj, oh Allah, I want to make Hajj. And you made dua like that throughout the months. Did you do that? What's not okay is for the person just to say, I never think about it. I never think about Hajj. And I never think about other aspects of Al-Islam from those things that Allah Ta'ala loves. Because from the best journeys, and the journey of a lifetime is the journey of a jihad. It's from the afdal uh, types of journeys. But there's no journey more important than the hajj. It's also, ikhwani, the journey of a lifetime, and this is what I want to remind you guys of, in that the people who perform hajj and umrah, they're not like the people who never perform hajj and umrah. Like the hafidah of the Qur'an, the hamratul Qur'an, the Hufad of the Qur'an. They're not like the people who don't memorize the Qur'an. Two different categories of people. Two different kettle of fish. And I don't want to describe the Hamad of the Qur'an as fish. You know what I'm talking about. Why are they special? The Prophet said about the people who memorize the Qur'an, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they are Ahlullah wa khasatuhu fil ard. They are the Ahlu of Allah and his special people in the earth. You know, Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt, your Ahl, my Ahl, my family. We're not going to describe Ahlullah as the family of Allah here. Allah Hasha, Hasha Allah. He doesn't have any family, has no sons, daughters, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, none of that stuff. So it's a bad translation, just as it is unacceptable to call Allah God. To call Ahlullah the family of Allah. And these people, now Muslims and Muslims, will come like Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, his mother, radiallahu anhu. They will come and say, Allah has family, Ahlullah. It's in that hadith. That's not talking about Allah's family. That's talking about the special people. They are the party of Allah, wa khasatuhu, the special people that are for Allah, because they memorize this kalam. They're not like me. They're not like you. Similar to that, people perform hajj and umrah, not like people who don't perform hajj and umrah. So I want to bring this to your mind. If you don't make hajj and you don't make umrah, I'm encouraging you. If you know people, you have a friend, you have family members, you should give them a party before they go. You should make restorations and make peace before they go. You should... Give them their money back if you borrow money from them before they go. When they go, if they come back, bis-salama, inshallah, you should have a party for them and do dinner for them. You should welcome them. You guys should come together and celebrate that your relatives went to hajj. Don't look at it as a small thing. Maybe you knew your aunt, your uncle, someone was going to perform hajj, your cousin, your friend, and you were happy for them. Nah, you got to be more than happy. You have to manifest that happiness because they're special. The Prophet mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Hujjaj, Wal Umar, Waftullahi, and Da'uhu, 
ajabahum wa in istaghfaruhu ghafar lahum people who perform hajj and umrah they are the waftullah the waftullah is his um what do you call that when a group of people go to the united nations to represent their country what do you call that the delegation the waf they are the delegation of allah the ones who perform umrah and the ones who perform hajj what's the meaning of that in our masjid right here green lane may allah ta'ala establish green lane on the sunnah from all angles say i mean especially when it rains out here cause them to combine the prayer and things like that make it easy for me for your information in the future, if it rains for Maghrib or Isha and the classes after Maghrib or Isha, I'm not coming. You could come, but ain't gonna be no class. Remember this Qaeda. Don't contact me if it's raining. If it's raining, like today, before Maghrib, just look at it and say, he's not coming. If he's alive, he's not coming. He's gonna take advantage of the Ruhsa and stay home with his babies. I came out today for you guys because I knew people would be here. And I'm shocked to see so many people came for the salat. Ala kullin, ala kullin. The waft of Allah. The people who perform hajj. If we all were performing hajj, we're going to have an amir. It's going to be Nur al-Din. And Muhsin will be the naib of the amir. Although I only know the amir from the sunnah. But just in case something happened. When we all travel, we represent alul hadith. We represent our da'wah. We represent where we come from. We represent this masjid. When you perform hajj and umrah, you're representing your mother, your father. You're representing your village where you come from. You have people bragging about what tribe they come from, different countries. They brag about it. But when they perform hajj, that's the time when you have to shine to show your tribe. He ain't even thinking about that. So his hajj is the hajj of, of taqlid, a hajj of bid'ah and khurafat and ma'asiyah. His hajj is all about what Allah doesn't love. But then he want to turn around and argue and say, I'm from this tribe and I'm from that tribe. What are you talking about? When you perform hajj, that's when you go and you are representing your locale, your masjid, your mother, your, your father, your grandmother, grandfather, great, who left you guys with al-Islam. So when you go there, you have to be on your best behavior because it's the bait of Allah. And your parents taught you better than that. Your parents taught you better than that. So the hajj shouldn't be a hajj and the umrah shouldn't be an umrah. We're well, doing crazy things. You're behaving crazy in the sacred precincts of Mecca and Medina. So the hujjaj and the umar who make umrah, they're special people. So if you're going, carry the responsibility of representing your village, your dawah, your sheikh, your masjid, your mother, your father, and so forth, so on. And if you're not going, and you know someone who's going, you have to reach out to them. Even if you don't give them a party, say, may Allah accept it. Make them feel that you feel happy for them. Because that's a sign of al-Islam. Like Allah mentioned about as-safa and marwa. Inna as-safa wal marwa ta min sha'a'in Allah. فَمَنْ حَجِّ الْبَيْتِ أَوْ اِعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِ يَتَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا Safa and Marwa, two mountains. You don't care about mountains that are in the dunya. I don't care about the Kalimanjaro mountain. I don't care about Bear Mountain in upstate New York. I don't care about these mountains in Honolulu over there, over here. But we care about Mount Uhud. We care about Safa and Marwa. We care about Mount Judi, which is in the Quran where the Safina or the boat of Nuh, of Nuh is stayed, and mentioned in the Quran. So those ayat or those mountains and rivers that are mentioned to us, they mean something to us. The blue Nile, the white Nile, the Euphrates, because it's mentioned in our religion. So Allah said that the mountain of Safa and Marwa are from the institutions of Allah. It's no problem whoever wants to make sa'i over them, around them, between them, because they're important. They're from the Sha'air of Al Islam. So, from the Sha'air of Al Islam is the Hajj. It's a sign, it's a Dalil that a person has Taqwa. And when your family goes, when you big the issue up, it's a Dalil that you have Taqwa, as the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
respecting the one who memorized the Quran, not going overboard in it or being too lax in it, that is making also the ijlal of Allah. The fact you respect him, you're respecting he has the Quran, you're respecting and glorifying Allah Azawajal. The third reason, khwani, and this is important, that's why nobody should sit here except after this talk, you say to yourself, I've been sleeping, man. I really never thought about it. I need to really, from today, get on the program of trying to make it to Hajj or Umrah, but especially to Hajj. The Hajj and the Umrah is a monumental journey, a journey of a lifetime because of the reward connected to it. You go to Dubai, you take your wife, take your wifey, you take your two children, three children, it's going to cost you three, four thousand pounds. You go to Dubai, you eat the food, you know, you zip. I think they call it zip flying or something like that. When you're going to, you know what I'm talking about? And you go across the desert flying, you can fly like this or whatever. You do that exhilarating, it's real nice. Have a good time in the sun. You surf and all that. You do whatever you want to do in Dubai. Get in the uh, speedboat with your family. Do this, do that. Have a good time. But when you come back, your pocket is going to be affected. Three, four, five grand. And it's permissible because you went to breathe. I got to get out of here. I was burning the candle from both ends. I'm tired. I'm stressed out. I want to take my queen and I want to go and have a nice, uh, a nice uh, time out in Scotland. Wherever you want to go. But I'm talking about Dubai. The dunya. You go, you come back, you're broke. Hajj is not like that. The Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tabi'u al-Hajj wal-Umrah. Fa'innuhuma yanfiyan al-Faqr wal-Dhanub kama yanfi al-Kir khubth al-Hadid. Do Hajj and, and, and Umrah and keep doing Hajj and Umrah. If you did Umrah a few months ago, do it again. If you did Hajj last year, do it again. You did Hajj two years ago, do it again. Don't be one of them people at the Hajj one time, khalas. He said, follow Hajj up with a Hajj and follow Umrah up with the Umrah. For verily, Hajj and Umrah, they extinguish poverty and they extinguish your sins. The same way the bellows, the, 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 the heat, the heat on the iron, the same way that iron cleans the the fire cleans the iron, or the or <laughs> gold or silver. So we put the gold inside of the furnace, and it burns, it burns, it burns. It burns off the impurities. It cleans it up. Hajj and Umrah are like that. If you perform Hajj, Hajj costs 14,000 pounds with some groups. I don't think anybody here can afford that. 14,000 pounds. That's the Hajj for brain surgeons. That's the Hajj for airplane pilots. That's the Hajj for the dons and the bosses who are millionaires, they have their own businesses. But even for people like us, three, four, five thousand pounds, that's a lot of cheddar. But although you spend that money, that money is not going as the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ma naqasa, malu min sadaqatin qat. Money for sadaqah was never decreased, ever. You spend visa la, it's going to come back to you. So he specifically told his community who were poor, make hajj and then do another hajj and another hajj. Make umrah, do another umrah, another umrah. Because hajj and umrah, it will wipe away poverty and wipe away your deeds just like that fire. He said in another authentic hadith, the reward of hajj, من حجة ولم يرفق ولم يفسق رجع من ذنوبه كيوم ولدته أمه Anyone who performs hajj, anyone who performs hajj, and he does it the right way, he will come back like the day his mother gave birth to him. Go to Dubai. Prostitution in Dubai. It's gambling in Dubai. It's drugs in Dubai. It's all kind of madness in Dubai. Everybody who goes to Dubai doesn't go for that. But 
many people, when they go to Dubai, it's for the mercy of Allah. Not a journey of a lifetime. Hajjiz. He mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-umratu ila al-umrati. Kafaratun lima baynahuma. Wal hajj al-mabrur, laysa lahu jaza'un illa al-jannah. One umrah to the next umrah will clean you up from your sins. Expiation. And the hajj al-mabrur, the correct hajj, when you do it the right way, there's no reward for it except al-jannah. The journey of a lifetime. You go, you perform that hajj, you do it correctly, you come back with no sins. The majority of the scholars of Islam in this hadith said, the sins that are being referred to here are the major sins and the minor sins. From Hajj gets rid of the major sins as well. So it is a tremendous journey that I want to encourage you, brothers. Don't sleep on the obligation of the Hajj. It is wajib upon everybody. And the fact that you don't work and you don't have money, you don't have two one-pound coins to rub together, that's how broke you are. That's broke. You don't have two one-pound coins. If you wanted to catch the bus from here to Spark Hill, you would have to get on the bus and ask the bus driver, can you let me on for free? That's how broke you are. <laughs> May Allah give you wealth. See what I mean? May Allah give you wealth. We're not laughing at you because we all been in that boat before where we didn't have money. We all been in that boat. Although that may be your wasp, your condition, ask Allah Azza wa Jal. Ask Allah, make it happen for you. For Umrah as well as for Hajj. Last thing that we want to mention, Khwani, concerning our mind here today is hurry up and perform the Hajj and don't lollygag around. The Prophet ordered the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ta'ajilu ila al-hajj. Fa'inna ahadukum la yadri ma ya'ridu luhu. Hurry up, Shaykh, hurry up and make the hajj. Hurry up. And don't delay and don't procrastinate. He said, for verily, one of you doesn't know what's going to happen to him. You're sitting there right now and you're looking young. Guys, mashallah, have no white in your lihya. Some of you don't even have the lihya yet. Some of you got the peach fuzz coming out. May Allah give you good health. So you don't see yourself as being sick. You don't see yourself as, you know, take advantage of five before five. One of them, your youth before you get old, your life before your death. You don't know what's going to happen. Let me tell you what happened to us. We were making hajj. Alhamdulillah. And then... Just like that, Allah shut it down for three years. We couldn't make hajj. You know why? You know why? Huh? COVID, man. People who lived in Medina and Mecca couldn't make hajj. Allah shut the program down for the whole ummah. Now, someone will be in the audience and they don't like hearing that because they're on the conspiracy and they say, oh, it wasn't real. It was really real. I mean, I ain't here for that. The point is, we couldn't make hajj. That's the point. That's the point. People wanted to perform hajj, and they couldn't make hajj. So you may be in good health today, but who promised you're going to be in good health next year? Who promised you're going to be here next year? May Allah Ta'ala give us all long life. So hurry up and perform the hajj. Someone who's in the audience has performed hajj and he performed umrah. But listen to what the Nabi said in the authentic hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, inna abdin ashahtu lahu jasaduhu wa wasa'atu alayhi ma'ishata thumma tamdi alayhi khamsa a'wamin thumma la yafidu ilayya la mahroom. He said, Allah said in this hadith al-Qudsi, my slave, I gave him good help. He has good help. And I also gave him money 
عليه في معيشته. I gave him money. I gave him wealth. He has enough money. And then five years passes him by, and he doesn't come to perform Hajj. He doesn't come. Five years. Allah said he is mahroom from haram. Mahroom. Mahroom means you will be prevented. Mahroom means a person like you can come in, but you can't. He's mahroom, haram. You can't come in. He, that person is prevented. Prevented from what? From a jannah? It could be. Prevented from the khayr. Prevented from the baraka. Prevented from the rahma. Prevented from Allah's help. Allah's protection. Prevented from getting married. Prevented from getting the job. Prevented from so mahroom. You don't want to be mahroom. We don't want to be mahroom. Make dua and that dua is mahroom. Anna yustajabu lahu. How? Why should his dua be accepted? He's mahroom because of what he's eating, because of what he's drinking, because of what he's doing, what he's not doing, what she's doing, what she's not doing, and so forth and so on. So hurry up and perform hajj. And don't lollygag. And don't procrastinate. Because in the religion of some of the people, in the religion of some of the people sitting in front of me is this thing about, I'll make hajj when I'm 40 years old. I'll make hajj when I get married. I'll make hajj after getting married, after I get a job. I'll make, what? You have to make hajj as soon as the opportunity presents itself. Now, I don't want to be rough and tough because from our 40 hadith book, we're coming across all of these ahadith that are showing the gentleness of al-Islam, the ease of al-Islam. I just told you, when it rains, don't even come to the masjid, man. You don't have to come to the masjid. Stay home. And leads, we don't pray when it rains. We're not going to pray. And if it does rain, we're combining. And with the Isha being so late, there are times we combine our prayer. Isha and Maghrib. Make it easy for the people. We're going to, inshallah, use what influence we have to talk to Green Lane, say to Green Lane, you guys have to combine the prayer with Alul Hadith. Are we not Alul Hadith here? We're not Alul Hadith. So anyway, hurry up and perform Hajj. Hurry up. But in saying hurry up, I'm not going to put you down and say you're not serious about your religion. I'm not going to put you down and say you're weak in your Islam. No. But the general rule is hurry up. And as we mentioned a number of times here in this masjid in our lessons, the general rule is hurrying is not a good thing. Being in haste is frowned upon. And I want to mention this a million times to you young brothers. Take your time. Because haste is a part of what it is to be young. So don't be too quick to get married. And don't be too quick to get divorced. And if you are married and you've been married for two months, three months, don't be too, cool, too quick to slide into second base. You've just been married for two months, brother. Take it easy. Don't be too quick for someone who you know from our class, but you don't really know him. And he asks you, can I borrow 500 pounds? And you feel good and say, yeah, I got... Nope, don't be too quick. You have to vet him. You have to ask people about him. Who has dealt with him and money? That's your hop. You don't have to feel obliged to give anybody money. Don't be in haste. Don't drive too quickly. Don't talk too quickly. Don't eat too quickly. Don't be in haste. Take your time. Haste makes waste. Rahman wa al min shaytan al ajla min shaytan being in haste, generally speaking, is from the shaitan. When you take an exam, don't be in haste, the general rule. But sometimes we can be in haste. Sometimes. Wafkuru Allaha fi ayamin ma'du dat. Faman ta'ajla fi yomain, fala ifma alay. Waman ta'akhra fi yomain, fala ifma alay. That's ayat. When you perform Hajj, the last days of Al Hajj, the days of a Tashriq, the last days when you have to be in Mina for three days, you stone each one of those days, 12th, 13th, 14th, you're stoning. 
Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone who wants to stay for two days only, then hurry up. No blame on you. Hurry up and leave that place before Maghrib on the second day. So if you stone before Maghrib on the third day, if you stone before Maghrib, you can leave. But if you are up there and Maghrib hits you, you have to stay. So Allah told you, hurry up. You can hurry up. Hurry up and make tawbah and istighfar. Give me some examples of other ibadat that you should hurry. Muhsin, give me one. An ibadah from the ibadat, the religious says, hurry up and do it. Hajj, other than hajj. Huh? When the salat time start, you should hurry. It depends. If it's really hot, you can delay it. If it's really hot, you can delay it. They say, what's the best deed, Ya Rasulullah? He salat ala waqtiha. Praying the prayer at the right time. And right time is that window of opportunity unless something forced you to pray close to the end time. That's uh, dislike. But you don't have to pray it as soon as it comes in. Best time for Isha is as late at night as possible. So we won't accept that answer. Muhsin, you my man. Huh? The qadha of the day. Somebody loaned you money, hurry up and get that man his money back. The word for procrastinating in the Dane is mumatila. Mumatila with a thought. There's tasweef, sofa, sofa. You procrastinate, you delay unnecessarily. Mumatila is about the debt. You just keep procrastinating, I'm not giving the man his money. You shouldn't even be performing hajj this year and you owe the man money. You're using the hajj money for him. You should go to that man and say, hey, I'm going to perform hajj. Would you allow me? Is it okay with me? Because he's going to hate you and be mad at you. And you're compromising and you're breaking the brother of Islam that some people don't care about. They don't care about the brother of Islam, some people, and that's why they uh, make you say mubtadi real easy on the lisan, kafir real easy on the lisan, steal your money, do whatever. It was easy. Give me an example of an ibadah from the ibadat, Nur al-Din Khalawi, that the religious said, hurry up and do that thing. We did that one already. You're sleeping over in the Zawiyah. We did that one already. Burying the person for the janazah. Burying the person for the janazah. Breaking the fast. Good job, my man. Breaking the fast. Hurry up and break the fast. Good job, brother. Any, anybody else? Breaking the fast? Ayo, give me one. Uh, he was going to say what he said. Okay. Okay, yes. Huh? As a watch. Hurry up and get money. Hurry up and get married. Hurry up and get married if you have the ability and you are ready for that. If you don't have the ability and you are not ready, don't do it. My brother in the pack. Huh? Making peace with your brother. Good job, my man. Hurry up. You have three days to get yourself together. It doesn't mean you have to wait three days, but hurry up and go and make islah. Good job, my man. Yes. What? Stand up and pray Fajr. The two, the two sunnahs of Fajr. That's a good point, my brother. Kind of. The Prophet used to pray, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two rakats of Fajr, the sunnah. And Aisha said it didn't seem like he read anything other than Al-Fatiha. But that doesn't mean he's in haste. But there's another prayer that you can be in haste. Anybody know what that prayer is? Huh? Anybody know the prayer where you can hurry up a little bit? Huh? No? Huh? Surat al-Khawf. If you have a reason, yeah, but not khawf. No, close though, brother. I tell you when. The hadith of Sulaik al-Ghattafan. 
prophet asked him, Yes, so late. Yes, so late. And so late? What hadith is that? What hadith is that? On the day of the Juma, the man came and he sat down. And from the member of Rasul said, Ya Sulaik, did you pray to Rakat? He said, No. He said, Get up. What the jaw was fihima and hurry up. Don't get up and pray long to Rakat. Just pray Suratul Fajr, Suratul Fatiha, and hurry up. Why should he hurry up? Why should he hurry up? So he can listen to the khutbah. So anyway, Ikhwani, this is a proof that there are always exceptions to every rule. There's always an exception to the rule. Always. Usually, there's an exception to the rule. Uh, concerning Allah being the one and only Ilah that deserves to be worshipped. Is there an exception to that rule? No exception to that rule. Yeah, but Abu Sam, you said every rule. I didn't say every man. You get the picture. Almost every rule, there's going to be an exception. But there's some rules, there are no exception. No exception. Any married man here is going to say, well, I let you disrespect my wife one time. Just once. But then, no, there's no exception to the rule. Don't disrespect my wife. We're going to stop here, Ikhwani. I say to you, Shabab, nothing but love for you brothers, you young brothers. See myself and you guys. And I was 22, 21, 23 years old, broke, no money, no money. But Allah is al ghani, Allah is ghani. Put your hands together, look up, cry, ask Allah Ta'ala al ghani al hamid for your needs, and Allah Ta'ala will bless you. Wallahi. When we perform Hajj, there are people there who were looking for people to perform Hajj for them, for their relatives who are dead and stuff like that. People who go to Hajj with us, they get there and they start asking, you know anyone who wants to make Hajj? And then we have to tell them about students who are in Medina and things like that. And they want to pay people to perform Hajj, so it's possible. May Allah open up the door to make you guys all pilgrims. If you remember one time I told the, you brothers about um, Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak, was a Miru Mu'minin in Hadith, he was a Zahid, and he had a lot of money. He was rich. And when he used to perform hajj, he would take all of his students. Not only would he be responsible for feeding them, taking care of their animals, but when they got there, he was responsible for their hotel and everything. And when it was time to come back, he would buy them gifts for their families. Read about his Biography in Sir Alam al Nubala to Al Imam al Dhahabi. That man had money and he was Kareem. I can only have Hasid about that. I wish I could do that. Ghibta. I wish I could take all of you guys to Hajj, give you money, buy gifts and everything like that, and we all come back on our own private personal plane. But that's not going to happen. But it's possible. Allah, Allah can make it happen. Allah can make it happen. But until that time, may Allah open up the means and the ways for all of you to go hajj with your wives as well. Allahumma ameen. Any questions about today's dars ikhwani? Tafadhi ya akhi. So if a person performs hajj already and he has money to perform hajj again, should he perform hajj again or should he give the money to someone? The companions of the Prophet as you remember the young boy in the hadith, the right, the right, he said, I'm not going to give ithar over to anybody over you, Ya Rasulullah. Not Abu Bakr, Khalid bin Walid, I'm drinking this milk after you. So I would never tell someone, give ithar and give the money to someone else. I'm never going to tell someone that. But you have to look at the situation. Who's the one you're going to give the money to? Your father? Give him the money. That's your dad. Yeah, your father, your uncle, your brother, someone like that. Your sister is going to go to Hajj and her husband can't afford it. You pay for her. Yeah, give them the money because you'll still get the reward of the Hajj. You'll still get the reward of the Hajj. 
but just anybody, everybody, somebody near. Nah, that's up to you if you want to do that. But the hadith that we mentioned, the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my slave, I gave him good health, I gave him money, five years come and goes, and he doesn't come to my house. He is mahroom. That's even if, five years, he made hajj, umrah, five years ago, three years ago. That doesn't mean it's wajib, but that hadith is highly recommending people to perform the hajj. So if it's for someone from your nasl, your father, your mother, yes. By the way, one of the most heart-wrenching, heartfelt videos that I've ever seen on social media was a young brother from Morocco who took his mother and father's passport and went and got them visas for Umrah or Hajj, one of, one of the other. And he brought the passports to them in Ramadan. And they had just finished eating, breaking fast. And he put the passports in a box that he wrapped up as if it was a gift. And he gave it to his mother. And she was happy, but she was opening it. But you can see they were tired because it just broke their fast. She opened it up. She saw the passports. She didn't know. She opened it up and had the Hajj visa and the tickets. And the lady just started crying. The mother just started crying. You talking about Birru Wadi Dane, brother? And Allah accept that from him. Can you imagine how happy your mother would be if you paid for her to go to Hajj? Akhi, fadl. <laughs> That's a good question, Akhi, because this is from the questions of the millennials and the Generation Z. And I've met these brothers. Now when you perform Umrah, you can go with groups where when you get over there, part of the package, you're going to go horseback riding. Part of the package, you're going to ride a doom buggies in the sand. Part of the package, you're going to go out in the, in the food, in the desert, and you're going to eat around the bonfire. So it is uh, youth-oriented and friendly. Uh, should that be done? Well, like, I support that. I support it. The reason why I support it is the people who I saw performing hajj, the youngsters who I saw performing hajj, some of them we're not practicing Islam in London. Some of them were in the streets. Some of them were wilding out. And they're not just going to go to Hajj. I've seen people who had negative experiences in Hajj, and they apostated at Hajj. I saw that with my own eyes. People who apostated at Hajj because it was too rough, and it wasn't making sense to them. And they were upset, and they kept getting more upset. He's mahroom, that person. So these boys, these youngsters who were hanging out in London and this and this and that, they came and they started practicing because they were with other practicing brothers and they showed them that the religion, it can be that thing. So for them, I support that. But if you're trying to perform a hajj or an umrah, an umrah, where you're focused, where you are focused, then that type of umrah compromises the seriousness. But you can still do it. You can still do it, but it's hard, I think. I personally believe that it's hard. So on one hand, I support that because I've given talks to those brothers and I met those brothers, and I think it's a great idea. I would like to say the company, because this company works with the group that I perform Hajj with, just so if you wanted to know about it. But I'm not going to do that because that would be like trying to big up someone and making money and all that kind of stuff in the masjid. And so from what I heard, they're going to start a Umrah Hajj uh, Hamla program and give special discounts for the students, I think he said. He said something like that. All right, Ikhwani, we're going to stop. We're going to stop here. I want to get out of here, inshallah, before the adhan of Isha. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What happened to my brother Ali?
عبد 